food and agriculture improvements in En-ROADS. This is the most requested set of improvements of, of all that we've made here in 2023. We're so happy to share with you finally the ability to change the drivers of deforestation and emissions, of methane, of nitrous oxide via the fertilizers. And even behind these drivers in food from animals, uh, food waste, another level behind it, a population and the GDP per capita changes that change diets. We also have some important changes with a feedback, a tipping point regarding crop yield and the ability to change agricultural practices. So much here. Okay, let's go check it out. We're going to focus on deforestation in this area of land, forestry, and food deforestation here, and the result in emissions. We're going to look at CO2 emissions from overall land use. I'm going to pull up these features are in the area of land, food, and industry, a little hidden, but under deforestation, because that's the biggest impact of these uh, diet and other food changes. You scroll down and you can say, use detailed settings. And over on the right with related graphs, one can pull up various things like crop production that's needed to feed the people of the world. And importantly, to feed the animals that feed the people of the world as well. I'll start with food waste. And here we can see that if we have less food waste, we can trace through what happens. We don't waste as much food. We don't have to produce as much food. Crop production needed goes down relative to what it would have been otherwise. In the bottom right, there is therefore less deforestation. We don't need to convert forests into farmland in order to produce the crops that are needed. Therefore, with the less deforestation, you have less burning of trees, less release from the soils and biomass, and therefore CO2 net emissions from land use goes down. Because of the connection now of deforestation to the overall carbon cycle, we have included, of course, now the fact that there would be less, I'll pull it over here, less, more removals from land, more sequestration because of these changes. Let's look at the second one, which is going to be percent of food from animals. I'm going to undo this. We'll go back under here to those CO2 emissions and net land use. So the second one is food from animals. Right now we're headed to 30% of diet by 2100. What if it is a lot less? We make this change. The percent from food from animals trends down over time. Less deforestation, less emissions, more sequestration. But here we also can track what happens to methane emissions. Less enteric fermentation in cattle. Therefore, methane emissions go down. You can see the blue line departing from the black there. And we need less uh, fertilizer. Less fertilizer shows up here, greenhouse gas emissions as nitrous oxide. So we have less N2O emissions. So you can see the way that the food system affects emissions of CO2, increased sequestration of CO2, methane, and N2O play out all of those effects. We're also now modeling a step behind those food factors to what the drivers are of them. So I'm going to go back over here to overall CO2 emissions from land use, and I'll pull up deforestation again. And over on the right, crop production needed, and reset it, and look back here at now population. Lower population, if that scenario plays out, then we have uh, less deforestation and emissions go down. Or if a higher scenario plays out, we have to feed more people, more deforestation, therefore more emissions. Also, if we look in the diet world, food from animals, percent of food from animals, I'm going to reset it. 
and we've added into this the connection that economic growth is actually driving diets. Uh, more GDP per capita, more food from animals, lower GDP per capita, less food from animals. So the drivers behind some of those dietary changes. Another thing that we've added to the model relates to crop yield and some of the effects of it. You may have noticed that uh, here under impacts, one can see as temperature goes up, there's a decrease in crop yield from temperature. Maize, wheat, rice, and soybeans were seen by the end of the century, a decrease in crop yield. Well, that's important for the agricultural system. So we modeled it here. And so as that temperature goes, excuse me, as temperature goes up and crop yield goes down, we can then go look at overall crop yield. Here, there is an effect so that as crop yield, excuse me, as temperature goes up, crop yield goes down, more crop production is needed. Therefore, emissions go up or deforestation goes up, emissions go up and temperature goes up. It's a positive or reinforcing feedback loop in the system. We've also made some changes over here under methane and other gases, the ability to change the adoption of agricultural best practices. Under greenhouse gas emissions, one can look at methane by source and nitrous oxide by source. Energy production methane, agriculture, and mostly enteric fermentation, and then waste, landfills, wastewater produces methane. Over on the right, most of this is uh, in the yellow area, agricultural nitrous oxide emissions, that's mostly fertilizer. When you change the adoption of agricultural best practices, a large amount of adoption will lead that yellow area to shrink and we can see the impact on overall methane emissions, nitrous oxide emissions, and therefore temperature over on the far right. So many changes to food and ag. I hope this was helpful.